Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another program of To God Be the Glory. We will be going into the book of Philippians today, and we will be talking about one particular verse here and praying that God will bring us to the knowledge of truth. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 9. Philippians chapter 3, beginning in verse 9, reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, The Apostle Paul here is recounting his own life in previous verses uh, as his life before his conversion as a Jew, as a Pharisee, and realizing that his salvation uh, and his righteousness was not of himself, but it is the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which brought him to this saving faith that he now has in our Lord and Savior. He realized as the Bible presents this to everyone, that, that, that all of our righteousness are as filthy rags. And he makes his case here by speaking about his past life as a Pharisee uh, and his obedience to the law added no righteousness within himself or it added no right standing before God. It did not justify him before God. And, and, and he realized that all of his righteousness is, is, is concerning all of us, that all of our righteous deeds are as filthy rags as the prophet Isaiah speaks of, and they cannot save us. They, they cannot clean us up in any way or, or make us presentable in God's sight in any way. And the only hope that we have is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We see that in verse 9 and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Jesus Christ's righteousness. And God picks that up in Romans chapter 5, if you will, verse 19. Romans chapter 5, verse 19. 
For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. And that's all of us. We were born sinners. We were born from Adam. So by the obedience of one, that one is Christ, shall many be made righteous. By the obedience of one, by the obedience of Christ, shall many be made righteous. That is, the one being spoken of here is Christ. And that is what Paul has come to write here in this letter. And that is what Paul has come to firmly believe in his soul. He goes on to say, Philippians 3 verse 9. But that which is through the faith of Christ, it is still referring to righteousness. But that which is through the faith of Christ. Here again in verse 9, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. Where where have we heard that before in scripture? Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. And and this is how God commands us to study the Bible. We are to compare spiritual things with spiritual, comparing scripture with scripture. In other words, God interprets his own word. We don't just read a passage and interpret it ourselves, but we must get our interpretation from the scriptures. Galatians 2, verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified. In other words, not justified. A man is not made righteous by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. How will a man be righteous? By the faith of Jesus Christ. That's what it means here to be justified by the faith of Christ. Made righteous, you and I, if we are truly born from above, made righteous by the faith of Jesus Christ. So it states here in Philippians 3, verse 9, that it is the, 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 the righteousness of Christ that comes through faith in Christ. Through the righteousness of the faith of Jesus Christ. Not of Paul. Not of any sinner but of Christ. And verse 9 completes, which is of the faith, which is of God by faith. And that's just rewording through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. It is all of God, the faith of God. You and I have no faith in God. Faith is a gift. We read that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, that our salvation, you are saved. God says you are saved by faith. You are saved by grace through faith. And that not of yourselves, but it it is a gift of God, not of works, not, not of your righteous works. 
And God goes on to say, lest any, any man should boast. And this is what happens when, when people are, uh, are, are living in their own righteousness. They boast. Uh, haven't you heard many times, I mean, I've heard it coming up all my life, you know, people in a church, they look down their, their, their holy, long holy noses at sinners and they say, well, I believed and you didn't. Uh, I, I'm a good person and, and because I've, I go to church or I, I, I attend prayer meetings or I do this and I do that or I'm, I'm on the deacon board, I'm a pastor or whatever, whatever have you business in the corporate body, the church, not being a part of the eternal church, they're, 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 they're living by their own righteousness. And I've been approached many times in my younger years by people, so-called Christians at the time, who would look at me as if they were better because they did something, because they do things because they attend church, because they do righteous deeds, good righteous deeds. God says we're saved by grace. We're not saved by anything that we do. And we're saved by faith. And that is the faith in Christ. Christ's righteousness, his obedience to the law, because if you and I try to obtain righteousness by obeying some of the laws of the scriptures, we fail. Because any one of us that are born from above, we understand the fact that, as Isaiah said, our righteousness are, are as filthy rags, and that is because you and I cannot obey this law perfectly. We are called to be perfect beings. We, we were created perfect. Therefore, we are to live perfect from the day of our birth to the day of our death. And anything, any flaws, any falling into sin, just one. James talks about that. God talks about that through the prophet James, the, through the apostle James. And he tells us that if, if we commit even the tiniest of sin, We've, we've committed them all. So it is through the faith of Christ. Even faith is of Christ. And it's all of God. And it's all of Christ. And Christ is God. Back to verse 9 again. In Philippians, Philippians 3, verse 9. I'm going to read that one more time. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. And here's what I want to touch on today. That I may know him. That I may know him. Do you know him? That I may know him. We should ask ourselves this most important question. Do, you, do I know him? Do, do you know the Lord? I mean, do you truly know the Lord? And what this is saying is that because God has saved us, and of course he saved us through faith, and that is the faith of Christ. And, and because of that, he clothes us in the Lord Jesus Christ's righteousness. We, we are clothed in his righteousness. His, his righteousness have been imputed to us. Our sin has been imputed to him. And this is what most theologians call the, the, the great transaction that he bore our sins and, and paid our debt, and, and, and at that time, God transferred his righteousness to us. 
so, so that it becomes our own righteousness through him. And, and these things are done so as this verse says in, in verse 10, the first part of this verse, that I may know him. And the Apostle Paul, of course, he, he's a pattern of the believer, of you and I, if we are truly born from above. And, and not just the professing believer, but the elect believer, the, the one who has been chosen from before the foundations of the world that we read about in Ephesians chapter 1. He's a pattern of the elect child of God. This is how the elect child of God comes to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And comes to know God. And God commands us as a believer to search the word diligently. We, we, we are to search the scriptures. In fact, as I stand before you today, you're not to trust me or you're not to trust any man, any pastor, any bishop, any pope. We're to trust in the Lord. The Lord says, trust in the Lord. The, 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 the Bible says in, in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. It is the Lord your shepherd. He, he leadeth us down the path of righteousness. Man cannot lead you there. I mean, I mean yes, God does give us good theologians and good people, who, who bring forth the truth of the gospel. But the fact is, are we trusting in the Lord, your God? Not, not trusting in me and what, what, what's rolling from the, these lips. I mean, if they're coming forth from, from the scriptures, you, you, you're to search these things. As the Bereans in Acts chapter 17, as, as, as they, they, they search the scriptures daily to see if these things are true. Are you doing this? As, as you're hearing uh, preaching in, in your congregations from men, from pastors and, and bishops and, 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 and all kinds of people who call themselves shepherds in the house of God. Are, are you trusting them or are, are you trusting in the Lord? Jesus, God says, do not trust any man. Who are you trusting today? This is why we have a lot of professing believers, not elect believers. You know, the elect are, are few. They, they, there's a remnant chosen to grace. They, there's not many. In fact, when, 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 when Jesus talks about the, 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 broad, the broad way, the broad path that leads to destruction, he says, many, many there go by. And then he talks about the narrow road that, 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 that few find it. It's narrow, and, and there's few. There's not many. The many is going to destruction. The few find the life. The, the, those are the, the elect, the, the ones who have been chosen from before the foundation of the world, and we need to understand this. Many men. And all of us have feet of clay when we speak the word of God. M many of us, we, we, we all need correction. Why we read in, for, what is it, 2 Timothy or 2 or 3.16 where uh, the word of God is for doctrine and reproof. And listen to this word that God has in here, correction. We're to be corrected by the word of God. And, and this is primarily for the Bible teacher. We should be being corrected. God corrects us all the time when we think we have a truth. And, and, and sometimes, you know, God will humble us as, as we're reading the word of God and we're to realize and he brings us to correction that we realize we, we read something the wrong way and, and, and we misunderstood something. We, we, we didn't compare scripture with scripture correctly. And it, it keeps us humble to realize that we're just a man. 
know many people out here who look upon their pastors and their preachers as if they are God. Oh, my pastor said this. My pastor said that. My pastor, my pastor, my pastor. Blah, blah, blah. Listen, do not trust in man. Do not trust in any man. Trust in the Lord. The elect believer, you see, he, he or she spends time in the scriptures. And of course, none of us are, are spend enough time in the scriptures. I'm guilty myself. But the fact is, when, 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 when we are the elect of God, we understand Psalms 23 as David would pray these words that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want the wisdom of men. I shall not want the creeds and the doctrines of my churches. I, I shall not want man's knowledge, uh, but I want the knowledge of God that I may know him. It says here in the text. I want to know God. I, I want to know God. I, I want to drink from the fountain of truth, which is Christ himself, the word of God itself. I don't want to be filtered through the minds of wicked men all the time. And I'm not saying that there are not faithful men out here preaching the gospel, but there are so many false gospels out here. And it's, it, it's like Christ says, the blind leading the blind. a scary situation because there's so many doctrines out here that sound so close to the truth that many are following this broad road to destruction this path is narrow it's unlikable to the flesh it's unlikable to, to natural man when God says, I've chosen you from before the foundations of the world, what do you mean he chose me, God? And when, when God goes on in Romans chapter 9 where he talks about the two babies in the womb, Jacob and Esau, and, 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 and he says these words that Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, so that the doctrine of election might stand. You see, when we hear these things, are we acceptant to that? Or do we reject Christ at that time? You see, once we begin to get to the hard sayings of Christ, do we continue to follow or do we go back? And we'll read about that in John chapter 6. I wanted to get there, but I see, I know my time is going to be passing quickly as we are slaves of time, aren't we? Profess believers and elect believers. The elect believers come to know the Lord because he's elected them to know him. He's chosen you from before the foundation of the world to come to know him one day. And in due time, in due seasons, he will, or he has already rebirthed you and you're coming to know him. And, and you're not trusting in your, your pastor or looking upon him like he's God, but you're trusting in the Lord. I'm trying not to stay on this point, but there are so many people that are lost. It's sad. It's so sad because I was one of them. I, I, my trust was in what I was hearing from men as they were filtering the gospel through their mind. Many people in churches today are, 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 are sitting, and, 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 and some may be uh, believers who don't even know this. They're, they're, they're sitting at God's table, and they're starving. Their souls are not being fed the truth of the gospel. I'd like to encourage all of you today, if, if you are a true believer, if the spirit has bore witness with your spirit that you are indeed a child of God, feast from the bread of life. Who is that Christ? 
who is Christ? Christ is the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word is God and so on. And, and feast from God, the true bread sent down from heaven. Drink from the fountains of truth, beloved. We, we, we're, we're in the, we all know that we're in the last days. We all know that, that, that believers drink from the fountain of Christ because they hear him. <laughs> my sheep, Jesus says, hear my voice and they follow me. He says, he, he doesn't say they follow man. He says, they follow me. Don't, they listen, don't follow me. I'm here to tell people to follow Christ. Why? Because I have feet of clay. Men make errors. But in the scriptures, there are no errors. You see, we're just messengers. We're not perfect messengers. No, man. I don't care how much they dress it up in religion. I don't care how much the Pope stand up there. I don't care how much your pastor. I don't care how much they look so holy and righteous. Beware of wolves in sheep clothing, the Bible says. So I, my, my encouragement to you today, and I hope to get through this study next week, is trust in the Lord. Listen to this text here. <laughs> that I may know him. I, I, I need you to know God. I need us to know the true and living God. Again, I, and I, I, I can't help but to say this over and over, put not your trust in any man. We all have feet of clay. Don't trust me for anything, but do as the Bereans in Acts chapter 17, where they search the scriptures daily to see if these things are true. So that when you're drinking of the water, of the gospel, when, when you're eating of the bread of life, as Jesus would say, I am the bread and I am the water. And when you're filled with this gift of the Holy Spirit and you have the water of life springing forth out of you, attesting the glories of God. You know it's only for one reason, because he chose to save you and redeem you and give you life. And you can only say when that happened to Christ, and Christ alone be all the glory, the honor, and the praises that are due to his name. Amen. Till next time, may God bless you.